Good evening, everyone. We're going to call our meeting to order. <coughs> we have the, ready? I'm ready. Okay. okay, our first order of business will approve the minutes from the July 13th, 2017 meeting. We've all received a copy of the minutes. Um, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second. I'll second. Any discussion? Corrections? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes of July 13th as written, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item, we're going to review uh, landmark eligibility for the Moline Plow Company Factory Building, also known as the Highway Trailer Building, at 501 East South Street. We'll start with <coughs> um, a public hearing, but um, I'd just like to start I'd just like to start by welcoming everyone and saying thank you for coming tonight. Uh, I appreciate that you're here and uh, we look forward to hearing your comments and, um, and are happy to listen to what you have to say. So thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. So as a reminder, we're looking at the Moline Plow company building um, uh, we looked at this briefly um, a few months ago where we looked at the evaluation criteria and thought it met the criteria in the ordinance for landmark eligibility um, Moline Plow Company was um, an important industry in Stoughton. It was probably arguably the most important industry in Stoughton and had an impact on the development of this community. Um, this Wagon Works and Plow Company was the reason that most Norwegian immigrants came to this community. So it had a direct impact on um, on that social history of this community, what, what we are now, how we identify ourselves now, is directly related back to this, uh, this industry and this company. Um, we also looked at the building, um, for its architecture, this is a <coughs> industrial loft building, um, late 19th century industrial loft building. It's a very large and impressive example of industrial loft construction in Stoughton. It's, it's the best example of industrial loft construction in Stoughton. Um, and for those reasons, We thought those reasons also contributed to why it was eligible as a local landmark. So um, we were asked to review this property by uh, a number of city council members. Greg Jensen and Sid Borsma asked us to pursue this uh, evaluation for these, this building and evaluate it for local landmark designation and to move forward with this process. And so we've done so. We are required to evaluate this property based on the criteria in our ordinance. Our ordinance spells out that we must evaluate buildings based on uh, six different criteria. It appears that this building meets four of them, exemplifies or reflects the cultural, political, economic, or social history of the city, state, or nation identified with important historic persons or events in our community. It embodies distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type 
and it provides an example of the physical surroundings in which past generations lived. So we'll start, uh, as I said, we'll start by opening the public hearing. And um, I have a number of people interested in making comments. So we'll start and open the public hearing. We'll start with Cherry Kittleson. Hi, good evening. Hi, thanks for letting me speak tonight. Because, well, my name is Jerry Kittleson. I live at 356 Stony Ridge Trail. Because my husband served on the RDA for 10 years, I'm familiar with what the city has been working towards for a decade, a beautified, thriving riverfront near the downtown. The amount of work it took to have an economic neighborhood plan and vision to attain the properties, to get the TIF funding, and to find a developer was painstakingly laborious. And beyond all the work and the planning, the city has invested a substantial amount of money to get us to this point in time. The issue I see now is that while the city and the RDA have been working towards this vision, the city council makeup has changed. They're no longer in agreement with the RDA neighborhood plan that was attached to the city's comprehensive plan many years ago. And the neighborhood plan clearly indicates the dilapidated buildings would be removed. My concern is that instead of the council or RDA revising that plan, the landmark committee is being asked to consider designating this building as a historic landmark in order to tie our hands into saving and restoring it, regardless of the cost, lack of interest by developers, and the delay it would cause to the project. This designation may possibly keep it from ever being developed and place an undue burden on the city from a financial standpoint and as a dangerous liability. My suggestion for the Landmark Committee is not to recommend this building be designated as a historical landmark. By not voting for it, you aren't automatically voting for the destruction of the building. There may be developers that come to us that do want to preserve it, but there may be some that do not. By making this designation, you may be tying hands that we don't need to be tied, and it may keep needed timely transformations from happening to a part of our city that so desperately needs it. Allow the people we elect to have choices on how to move forward. Do not limit our choices by designating this a historical landmark. Thank you. Thank you. The next person registered to speak is Norval Morgan. Hello, I'm Norval Morgan, registered uh, voter, property owner, taxpayer, and I live at 700 East Main Street in Stoughton. And I'd like to take you back uh, to June, July, and August of 1951. I was in high school. I had the opportunity to get a part-time job at the Highway Trailer Company at the located building that we call the Moline Plow Company now, I guess. And uh, in this day and age, that might have been called an internship. It was a summer job for me in the welding department. And it was a nice uh, job for uh, experience and whatever. Uh, and that happened for the summer. And uh, along in the job that was done there, the building was actually uh, an industrial and an architectural, probably a dump at that time. And um, I don't mean that to be funny. It was. It was, uh, it was not a, uh, really a good building. And then we can fast forward now 66 years to 2017. And right now, it's, uh, it's still probably an archaeological dump at this point from my perspective. And I don't think that... Um, there's a future for that building when it's falling down now and uh, anything along with it. 
And uh, at one time I had some heartstrings to that. I had a good job there for a summer. And uh, now there's strings attached, but it's purse strings. And I don't think that uh, $2 million or more is worth putting into that building. And I really don't think that a million to tear it down is a little bit too much from my perspective. But I would like to um, everyone involved to use common sense in uh, uh, what happens with this building. And uh, my permanent thought is to uh, demolish the building. Thank you. Thank you. The next person registered to speak is Robert Jensen. Thank you for the opportunity to come and make some comments uh, mm -hmm. this evening. Um, I guess in the last 50 years, I have rehabbed two historic tobacco warehouses, one right across the street from the 501 building, one in Edgerton, uh, rehabbed a furniture store building in Edgerton, built a condominium building, nicely timed when everything crashed and uh, on Hamilton Street, but we've prevailed. And it's been my experience that when you you get the best estimate you can of what a company's going to cost, and then you go ahead with all the unknowns and the variables that you're going to find once you start exposing what you're getting into, you better add about 40%, and that's where the tab's going to settle. So instead of two to two and a quarter million, I'd say probably more like $4 million by the time you're done. My feeling is we've got a new... Uh, government building to be funded and built. The city has been struggling to budget and make the budget work with items that need to be accomplished and done now. Uh, we add the cost of that new building. We've got a few years to go uh, before the another referendum I'm sure will be coming up for the Stoughton School District. And I honestly don't feel that putting that kind of money into that building warrants it. I don't think Stoughton can afford it. Um, I guess if there was a, a purpose that would be served by that restored building, such as the Opera House that generates revenues for the city of Stoughton, um, that would be a possibility. Um, but at this point in time, I think it's blocking an opportunity uh, to pr really do a nice project that will benefit Stoughton for many, many years to come. Um, I think trying to save that building has turned away one really well-qualified developer. Um, I think we need him back. It seemed that he left the door open to come back and work on the project if we rectified the situation. He didn't even know that that was going to uh, be an issue, but it turned out to be. It would seem to me that if you're going to do something like this, with the amount of money that's involved and the uncertainties that are involved, a referendum ought to be held and give the people, the taxpayers of the city of Stoughton, the opportunity to weigh in and express their desires and their feelings about how they want their tax money spent. Thank you. Thank you. The next person registered to speak is Bob Diebel. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I have a couple written comments here. Um, I urge you not to approve the designation of this building as a local landmark. <clears throat> the reason I say this is because the primary goal for this site is a successful Riverside redevelopment project. The best way to ensure that a successful Riverside development does not happen is to require that this building be preserved. Uh, we need to offer the most flexibility in utilizing this site, and if that means the best use requires demolition of the building, then so be it. 
historic preservation has its place, but we have a situation where a developer has already withdrawn from the project because it was unworkable after the recent council vote to preserve only a part of the building. It seems that wishful thinking to it seems that it is wishful thinking to expect someone to come forward and invest money in rehabilitating this building after it's been in a state of steady decline for at least 50 years. Designating this as a local landmark will most likely ensure that it stands there an unused eyesore for years to come, requiring taxpayer money to maintain it. In order to promote the best chance of a new Riverside development, I urge you to vote no on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. The next person registered to speak is Kendall McBroom. Well, good evening. And uh, I'm coming at you at a little different angle. Uh, some time ago, I was involved in uh, restoring a uh, tobacco warehouse down right by the railroad tracks and uh, with a lot of volunteer help and uh, uh, a reasonable amount of money we turned uh, a, a, uh, a building that was just about falling down uh, into the youth center and uh, that's been uh, an extremely good thing. Now we are uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm surprised by where you're at and you're wanting to restore a, uh, a brick block that has no architecture significance to it. Uh, the corner of the building where the uh, where the, uh, uh, oh, the, uh, uh, oh, the, uh, oh, my God, excuse me, uh, the, uh, oh, oh, the blacksmith shop. Now, uh, the architect that was talking about restoring the, uh, that, uh, the blacksmith shop, he said, there's, there's a little outfit over in Milwaukee, and it was the Alice Chalmers com uh, uh, company, and that was huge. Really uh, uh, a lot of area, and when that was taken down, tore down to be restored, they saved a building like our blacksmith shop, put a roof over it, made that part of the community there as a park area uh, in there. And when they were talking about that, I was hesitant at all, get out. But uh, with uh, a camera tied to uh, a little uh, helicopter that was able to fly around through the building and look at it, uh, I could, uh, make a reasonable guess that that was going to be structurally sound. Uh, I've got an engineering background and that looks like a reasonable thing. You can go in and turn the block of bricks into the game plan is to simply run that through a rock crusher and turn it into dirt right there except leaving the framework for the uh, blacksmith shop and make that part of the uh, of the new development riverside thing and let's put our focus on what we want the river uh, the riverfront to do and for gosh sakes make that a place where maybe young uh, educational educational people come to Stoughton to come back we've uh, uh, growled for years about no development in our downtown 
that's a beautiful place to bring people, new input people into Stoughton that are likely going to be participants on Main Street. Edgerton, they're converting uh, tobacco warehouses into uh, residential places for people that uh, work in Madison and around the area. We need to focus on that kind of thing. And uh, the architect that was uh, made preliminary plans had that really aimed well. We don't want that place to be a low, more low income. We want middle income type people in there middle-income people are going to support downtown. Low-income won't, you know, and they talked about that and tried very, you know, that was part of their, their push. And uh, I think uh, let, let an excavator come in, turn that into dirt, except for the uh, blacksmith shop, and uh, the, uh, the, the blacksmith shop and uh, the, uh, the uh, other uh, buildings that are down there that uh, I'm, I'm a little afraid that the, some of the numbers that you're working with, the amount of things to tear down are also for the mill fab building because uh, in the, uh, uh, Cherieki, uh, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but a month ago here, we had discussions about that, and uh, that uh, uh, what was on the riverfront, people uh, hiking the riverfront, bicycling up and down, that's what we want to push. And that ties in real well with uh, the uh, uh, Rotary Park up by City Hall, and uh, that becomes part of that thing, and promote that, work on that as compared to trying to tur uh, turn an ugly brick block into uh, something that might be inhabitable. But uh, anyway, I, uh, I strongly suggest you do not make a brick block, something, the, uh, our history, we've already got a lot of that in our tobacco warehouses and city hall and stuff like that for our history. And uh, thank you. Thank you. The next person registered to speak is Therese Hahn. I'm Therese Han. It's Han and Peggy. Sorry, Therese. Peggy's Sorry. my neighbor. <laughs> you would I think she'd say it right. <laughs> um, I live at 200 North Monroe Street, and I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, and I'd like to talk a little more about something I think it's Jerry said about tying hands. Um, I think that Stoughton has a school district in turmoil. I think that we have had our fair share of conflict, whether it's over Kettle Park West or whether we should use pesticides or whatever chemicals on our park lawns. Um, I think we have enough things going on that are not going to welcome new and young families to our community. I think that needs to be a focus. And I think that when we force that building to have millions of dollars put into restoring a shell of a building, that is going to put us in a position where we're expecting new young families to come here so they can spend tax dollars to drive past a pretty abandoned building. And I've never heard of young families looking for that. They want schools, 
parks, trails, but they don't want pretty abandoned buildings. So please reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Next person registered, uh, I'm sorry, it's hard to read the last name, Paul and Kathy Braumeyer. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry that I did that. I, had I known you were going to read the name, I would have <laughs> printed it out for you. Paul Braumeyer and my wife Kathy, 1116 East Academy. We East Siders of course, have to stick together. You know, I, we bought this house 15 years ago. Little house, as you turn the corner uh, um, underneath the railroad tracks that come around, it becomes East Academy. When we first moved here, my wife pointed out that up at Veterans, it was listed as South Academy. So she did her job and it's now East Academy officially. <laughs> We Eastsiders recognize that Stoughton is moving west towards Madison. Sometimes we Eastsiders think we get short shrift a little bit, you know. Beautiful houses, little houses along there that were built during the time when the uh, trailer company was at its peak. There are three houses there that are identical. We live in one, Don and Elaine live in another, and Marcy lives in another. But it's very interesting, you know, built in 1923. Drive by East Academy sometime, we have a beautiful flower garden in the back. I want you to imagine, if you would, on the Yahara River, when we first bought the house, it was because Derek and Carmen, my son and daughter-in-law, were going to UW to get their doctorates. They couldn't afford apartments in Madison. They found this little house. As we were driving along 4th Street, Derek said, don't mind that ugly building on the left. It blocks the beautiful Yahara River, and it's right up against the sidewalk. I said, who would build somebody something like that? right up against the sidewalk. Well, I found out later that there was some historical significance to the building. As the years went by, my son and daughter-in-law moved to Milwaukee. Kathy and I, living in Chicago at the time, retired north to beautiful Stoughton. Love the downtown, we can walk everywhere. Coffee cup, it's a wonderful place. Anyway, I keep driving by this for the last 10 years, this ugly building. <laughs> I see kids at night, midnight or later, and I've checked with the police, trying to pry their way into the building. You've seen the holes in those metal buildings and the trouble and that has gone on. Imagine if you were, if that was opened up to the beautiful Yahara River, keep the blacksmith shop. Get rid of the other stuff. Make it into a park, perhaps a bridge across the river into Mant Park. People could come and go. Kids could fish. Even I could fish in the Yahara River. It's a great thing. We, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk to you folks. And the full city council was here one night. And all I'm saying also is remember the east side. We're good people over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we have Greg Jensen. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Greg Jensen. I live at 724 Berry Street, Stoughton, Wisconsin, and I am the third district alder person. Uh, I remember the east side. I grew up over there. <laughs> uh, yes, and we were good people. Still are. Um, one correction, Peggy, I'd like to make. Uh, 
I did not ask for this. That was it. I asked that we do not do this. Say again. Um, I did not ask for this. That was Sid. Sid asked for this. I asked that you do not do this. And my reasoning for doing that is, is very simple. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you, you a question. I know this is not a tit-for-tat thing that you can answer this later. Uh, one of the things I know in your meetings, you've mentioned to me that you cannot designate a portion of a building as a landmark. You can only portion an entire building or an entire complex. So my question would be is, this building is not intact. It is already missing the power station and it is always missing, already missing a third wing of that building. So why is, that, why is this now qualified? Okay, that's my one question. The other question is why now? Why are we doing this now? This building has been vacant for, what, 30 years? And it's been designated to be demolished for probably the last 10 to 15 years? So why are we doing this now? It seems to be political. Um, the way other thing I wanted to, to just comment on is that uh, you as commissioners are representing the city, even though you are citizen representatives, you are representing the city. Uh, and I ask that you have a wider focus than the focus that you have stated to me as being that you are, your job is to preserve, preserve history, preserve buildings. I ask that you have a wider focus. That focus would be what else is going to be impacted by your decision. And what's going to be impacted by your decision is the RDA, the council, and the rest of the city. So I ask you to be very careful as to what you're doing tonight. Um, as other people have said before, this is, uh, this is, is clearly going to put a roadblock in, in uh, front of the council. Um, it is going to limit our ability to make decisions. It is going to create a situation where we will either have to um, abandon this project completely or spend two and a half million dollars worth of taxpayers' money to fix this building up, and that would need to be done quickly because of the safety issues. I don't want to be put into that position. So I'm asking you now to please either table this or to reject it. And I, I'm hoping that you will do that. Thank you. Oh, and the other thing, too, is I've been asked uh, in emails to have a roll call vote. I don't know how important that is here, but a roll call vote, please. Thank you. Next registered to speak is John Thompson. I've been a lifelong resident of Stoughton, and as you may know, I'm pretty uh, active on social media about this issue. And I actually proposed this question a few weeks, uh, two weeks ago, if we should keep this building or tear it down. All the responses that pertain to this building, almost 100% of them say, tear it down. And I have to agree with them. Last meet was two and a half million dollars, which I think is conservative, just to restore this building to an empty shell. And with no promise that there's going to be a developer, um, I feel that given this building landmark des designation, it's only going to impede that from either being developed or to be torn down. And frankly, um, some people, some councilmen say that they, they hope to recover some of the cost through, from the developer or through grants and so on. I think the city should just tear it down, consider it as a sunk cost, and either develop the land as it is, or simply turn it into a park. Uh, the emails I sent to all the 12 council members, I got a few responses back. This one struck me. This decision will be based on facts, finances, safety factors, professional opinions, personal, personal experience, and public input. We will do our best in representing the interest of the community and its taxpayers. I can't help noticing that public input and taxpayers always came in last. Um, I just want to see this building gone. I do not want to see any landmark designation for this building or any other building on the property. It's only going to delay things. 
And lastly, I want to request that any vote on this issue from this council or from the full council be a roll call vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next person registered to speak is Ronald Dobb. I'm sorry, I can't read the last Dobie. name. Doby? Doby? Thank you for allowing me to come and speak with you. Um, I have been involved in the restoration of a historic building in this community. Uh, it was first dedicated in 1905. I became involved in that building in the early 90s, and the previous occupants of that building were building a new building, and so had not spent a lot of time, money, or effort to keep the building that we purchased in good condition. So it took quite a bit of work, painting, redecorating, uh, upgrading the electrical. Um, we, we had a, a vision in mind that we would restore the building back to its original condition, only strengthen it. And by original condition, through the 60s and 70s, uh, paneling had come in, drop ceilings with fluorescent lights like these in this historic building. And we thought, wouldn't it be nice to take it back to where it would look more like it might have looked back in 1905? In my office in that building was a drop ceiling, and above it was a tin ceiling, one of those gorgeous old tin ceilings in really bad shape. And we took a lot of time and effort to restore that tin ceiling and see that put back into that office we installed air conditioning in the building. It took quite a bit of money. And in recent years, we had to rebuild a part of the building because the bricks were falling out. And it was in danger. In fact, there was one time when a police officer came by and said, did you want us to rope off the sidewalk because the bricks up there in that, that part of your building are getting ready to fall out? I said, we're on it. We're getting bids. You know, I think we're OK. So it took about $50,000 to rebuild part of that building. Um, it was successfully completed, and the building is in really, really good shape today because of all the efforts of restoring it, bringing it back to what it may have looked like. We had some historic windows in there that I think took about $30,000 to restore those stained glass windows, and we put them back in, and they're gorgeous, all that kind of stuff. Having said all that, the building I'm talking about was in continuous use since 1905. It was not vacant, except for a few months before we, we bought the building. So it had a purpose, and it continues to be used for that purpose. The building you're considering giving designation, doing the restoration on, has been empty for decades, has had no purpose for its existence. And uh, I was speaking with a police officer before I came up here tonight, and there was a report of some people on the building, in the building or on the building, and they had to go down to investigate just recently. And they did not want to go into the building because it was, was in danger of falling down. Um, that has blocked off a significant street in our community. It is a danger. Having up those barricades is not going to stop people from walking through there. So the liability of, of that building is significant. As I was thinking about my comments here tonight and that building, I was reminded of a former president who went over to Germany and stood in front of a structure that had historical significance, had at one time served a purpose, uh, not necessarily a good purpose, but a purpose nonetheless in some people's mind. And he said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The wall had outlived its purpose. It was now an impediment to moving forward. And I'd like to suggest that that building there has outlived its purpose and it's time 
to tear down this wall. So I hope that you will consider moving on that as opposed to making it a historical boondoggle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next person registered to speak is Mike Engelberger. Thank you. Um, I live at uh, 1011 Summit, uh, which also happens to be a condo complex that includes a 1901 uh, historic building, Southside School, uh, which also houses uh, several families with kids in school in our in our school system um, I somebody read read something out of uh, I'm also on the City Council here and I answered a few letters that uh, uh, as I tried to when people write um, and I, I wrote the comments that he mentioned uh, we make these decisions based on facts finances safety factors professional opinions personal experiences and public input do our best in representing the community and the taxpayers. <clears throat> That's basically what I'm going to do, and I hope the council does that, and I hope you guys do that also as representatives of the community. Um, and th those are in no particular order, so just so you understand that. Um, I, I'm a, uh, I guess I would consider myself a pro-historic uh, preservationist. I, I served on the Landmarks Commission with you guys uh, proudly. And uh, I also was a charter member of the uh, Fitchburg uh, Community uh, Landmarks Commission uh, back in the 90s when they started that organization. Um, you know, there's, a, there's probably three or four things that this city is known for. One is our, one is our Norwegian heritage. Um, one is our Opera House, which is a great facility a great draw for the people to the community the other is our historic nature uh, we've got five historic districts four house uh, home districts residential districts and one downtown historic district and that's something that uh, I think the people in this community are pretty proud of and it does draw a lot of people to this community um, I, I will be uh, listening to all the input um, uh, taking consideration on everything I do have some experience myself in uh, preservation uh, in the construction industry that I've worked on for 35 years. Um, I know we have some real professionals here on, that are commissioners and take great care in uh, uh, researching things and, and designating buildings and doing their best to keep, uh, keep this community uh, historic as, as it has been for many years. So I would encourage you to uh, um, designate this building as a local landmark. Uh, my understanding of the landmarks ordinance is that you recommend to the council and the council um, is the one that makes the final decision. I know there's been some concern that uh, maybe we should wait until uh, uh, we have a developer in mind to do this before we designate it. You know, the, the council can take its time, I believe. I don't know that there's any time limits after you designate that, uh, that the council needs to act within a certain amount of time. Uh, but uh, that's a consideration the council can take if you do designate uh, the highway trailer building as a landmark. And uh, one other thing I just wanted to mention was uh, about six or eight months ago, the RDA uh, did have uh, a developer that wanted to develop this building uh, for no cost to the city, no TIF money, uh, and they, they just wanted to develop this building as a historic building, uh, go for the credits and that kind of thing. It would have to be a landmark in order to get those credits, and I appreciate that you're doing that. Uh, I'm hoping that there's still, uh, that that developer is still going to possibly have some interest. I, I missed the meeting last night of the RDA, so I don't know what they discussed. But uh, uh, so I mean, there's a, there's a right there is something. If it could happen, that would be a million dollars less than anything that anybody is, has even heard of uh, 
that, that could happen to this building. You know, and I asked two questions of Stephen when he uh, reported to the council uh, regarding this building. One was, w can this building be preserved in a safe manner? And the second question was, um, can a building that looks so horrendous as it does look like a nice restored historic building? The answer I got from Steve was, yes, it can. And uh, so um, I, w I would uh, recommend that you uh, designate this building and the uh, council will consider uh, after that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have anyone else registered to speak unless anyone has changed their mind and would like to make a comment. If that's true, you're welcome to do so. Yes. Don Wally. Who is this? Don Wally. Oh, yes, please come to the podium and... Um. Well, my name's Don Wally. I live at 2571 Havy Lane, Stoughton, Wisconsin. Um, I own, uh, I did own the highway trailer building, I did own Milfab, and I own other properties in that area down there, so I have a lot of history that I can uh, give to you on that. Bottom line, there's been a lot of bad decisions made by the city over the years. And let me start with the first one. We abandoned the building about 20 years ago because it got too expensive to uh, repair. And we built other structures so it allowed us to leave that building which we use for storage. Okay. Uh, in 2002 or three, I uh, joined Randy Alexander who develops these old buildings, restores them, and he's done it all over the state and all over the country. Okay. We got together and, and uh, agreed that he was gonna restore that building. Uh, we went to the city, and the city gave Randy a $1.6 million tax uh, uh, a TIF financing on the, on the property. That $1.6 million would have uh, purchased the building from me and did other site uh, improvements and so forth to subsidize the cost of uh, restoring that building. It was an $8 million project with a $1.6 million TIF funding to support it. And Randy Alexander went ahead with the project and uh, went ahead and did the phase two environmental on it, which cost him $35,000. After that, the city in its wisdom decided to reduce the TIF funding from 1.6 million to 1.2 million, okay? Now, why did they do that? You have to ask John Neal that when he was treasurer at the time, okay? Well, Randy was a little upset about that because that uh, ruined his projections of the whole project. So I got together with Andy and I says, Andy, I'll give you the building and the property. You give me 2% of the project in return and that'll help you. And he says, that'll do it. So we decided to go ahead with the $1.2 million funding, or TIF funding, okay? No sooner have we decided that, a few months later, the city, in their wisdom, decided to drop it to $1.1 million. At this point in time, Randy Alexander, pretty frustrated, and says, I'm out of here. He left. He destroyed the project, okay? Now, why was that a, a horrible decision on the part of the city? Number one, if they would have handled it, at, even at $1.6 million, they have first lien on an $8 million apartment project. No risk. Okay. But the city killed it back then. So then the building set from that point up until seven years ago. I sold it to the city. All right, well, the terms of that sale are, I get paid off uh, if the property is developed, or when it's developed, or 10 years, whichever occurs first. 
So it looks like I'll be paid off in three years because I don't think it's going to, the way things are going and the, the way the decisions are going, it's not going to happen. So I'll get paid off in three years. Okay, okay the, that was another bad decision on the part of the city. Why? Because I knew that if I didn't get rid of that property, my lowest bid to tear it down, and that was in 2002, 15 years ago, was $240,000. Now today, it's a lot more than that. Okay. And if the city would have been a little more patient and had somebody that could negotiate, they got it for nothing. Because I'd have given it to the city for nothing rather than to pay $240,000 to tear the thing down. Okay, what's the next mistake the city made? Big mistake. They bought the Milfrat property for $750,000. Now that property is worthless. It's, it's, it has a negative value, just like that highway trailer building had a negative value to me, because I had to tear it down. That property down there is in such bad shape, it's unsaleable, it's unusable. And the city paid $750,000 for it, if they had somebody that had a little common sense, a little bit of negotiating to, uh, savvy, they'd have got it for nothing. Because the bankruptcy court would have been faced of maintaining the building or tearing it down eventually. And that would have cost a lot of money. They wouldn't have done it. So the city could have obtained the building for nothing. So that's the next big mistake the city made. Now recently, the, uh, the committee here, I think, and the city council, I don't know, um, voted to tear the building down. Good, that was the right decision. One of the few correct decisions that have been made on that project. Okay. Then a month or two later, somebody came up with a bad idea to restore that it's old Garden City Foundry. It's no foundry building. It's a steel frame. Everything else is gone. Okay. That was one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. Okay. Then the next thing I heard, the committee or the city council decided to restore the whole building. Horrible decision. Okay. A couple of facts. Uh, When Randy Alexander, when we were going to uh, remodel that building, we tried to get historical credits. And believe it or not, we couldn't get any historical credits because nobody can identify when that building was built. Believe it or not. The city records, Dane County records, we couldn't find any records identifying the date that that building was built. Therefore, you can't get historical credits because you have to have a building date. So Randy Alexander didn't, when the project was go, we did not, were unable to retain historical credits. Now I read somewhere where you expect it, if you do restore the building a 40% uh, historical tax credit, better have your attorneys check that because I restored the tobacco warehouse, we got historical credits on that, it was 18%. Something's wrong with that 40% figure. That building is in such bad shape, I think it's unrestorable. And if you can restore anything, but at what cost? It's restorable at an uneconomic figure. And the taxpayers are going to get whacked again if you try to restore that building, they're going to get whacked bad. Okay. So, bad decision to do anything with that building but tear it down. That's my opinion. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment that did not um, 
fill out one of the registration forms. You're welcome to come and make a comment if you'd like. Okay, so we have a few uh, a few people who have submitted comments but did not wish to speak. Um, one is from Jennifer Hansen. This building was purchased with city funds, taxpayer money, with the intent to demolish. This is what should be done. If our city has an extra one million to restore, I'd much rather see this money be donated to the school district who continues to lose funding due to declining enrollment. Approving this matter is fiscally irresponsible. And then we have um, another written comment. This is from Roger Springman. And he writes, the issue of a need for landmarking is totally independent from a decision on highway trailer complex demolition in whole or part. Doing one does not necessarily affect the other. Preliminary investigations have already concluded that preserving the highway trailer complex for future use can happen with or without landmarking. The right preservation plan and developer would make all the difference. Proceeding with landmarking at this time is a prudent course of action. Thank you. So those are the only, those are the only comments that I have um, from people who did not register to speak. So at this point, one more chance. Anyone want to make a comment before I close the public hearing? Okay, go ahead, Sid. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I wasn't going to speak, but I've heard uh, a lot of comments and uh, just, just, just did want to sort of clarify something. Uh, I had attended a Landmarks meeting a number of uh, months ago, actually. I think it's been two months at least. Um, and the, um, the question at that point was whether or not um, uh, you could uh, designate part of the building or all of the building as a landmark. And, um, and uh, my thought was that if part of the building could be designated as a landmark uh, and the other part torn down, the, um, that, that might be a possibility. Um, and I did, I did raise it as a possibility at that point. Um, it sounds as if in reading the materials that that's just not going to be possible, that the whole thing would have to be designated as a landmark. Uh, that sort of changed my opinion on whether or not we should or not. I am a representative of the, of the city, and my position is that I, I have to look at it from, especially from, the, from, the, from what, the, what the, the residents want for uh, a development like this. And, and I fully intend to, to look at that as one of my priorities, is, is voting on, a, on an issue related to what I feel that the community really wants because this city owns that property at this point and it, and it owns a lot of responsibility for um, what to do best and I think having, um, I just appreciate all these people coming out tonight to talk about it. Um, I was asked before this meeting what, I, what my position was gonna be and I said, you know, I really want to hear what the community has to say. So um, uh, that's where I stand at this point. Um, I, I can say at this point I'm not in favor or disfavor. I just want to. I want to hear. I want to hear it out. And I want. Um, so I. Um, I think the landmarks commission committee commission has been put in a really kind of difficult situation, but. Um, I know pretty much everybody on that, and I think that the, the best decision will be made. I, I also think that the Landmarks Commission should consider 
what the what the residents of the city want for that building. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, another hand. Sure. Hi, my name is Bob Sire. I live at 916 Hillcrest Road, and I really, I really appreciate hearing the people speak on this because I've, I've only lived in Stoughton 17 years, and I haven't really been involved that much in the city. Um, I fish in the Ohara River. You know, I look at the old building. I like old buildings. You know, I, and I hate, I hate to see them torn down, but. Uh, there does there does come a time you know when you have to make a choice you know you have to look at them real hard and that's why I appreciate you know looking at it to see does it have landmark status I don't know the history of the building you know I don't know the history of a lot of the stuff in Stoughton we have a lot of old buildings and stuff that you know they we, they chosen they're chosen to be preserved and we really don't have a use for them yet but we're going to have something that's going to fit in there so we'll spend money on it and we'll fit something in there someday um i don't think you can do that with this building you got to have a concrete plan um so the city owns it right now if the city can find a developer they should sell it to them for a buck and say okay you got the risk, you got the development, you know, you take care of it, you fix it up. Otherwise, if you don't have a use for it, tear it down. Thank you. Thank you. Another hand. Yes. Uh, my name is Matt Hanna, 118 East Taft Street. Um, I know, uh, you know, the role of the Landmarks Commission is to really just look at the building and not necessarily consider the development, and that's more on, say, Planning Commission and Council. But, you know, it's, it's a pretty big issue, um, and I'd have to agree with what Greg said earlier. It's 100% political. Um, the timing of it just doesn't make sense. Um, the reason that it's being, you're asked to do this, and I appreciate your service on this commission, but um, from a personal opinion, I don't think the timing is right. So um, I guess in the least case, I would say table it, because um, it really isn't, it, table it or turn it down. I mean, that, that's what I would be in favor. But at the least case, you guys don't need to make any action on this. I don't think it's necessary because you haven't made any action on it while the city's owned it for X amount of years. So why now? It doesn't make sense. It's 100% political and it's clear. So the other issue I want to bring up that really hasn't been mentioned is that we currently have two blocks of taxpayer paid utilities that we aren't able to use. The east siders aren't able to use. And with no time frame on this building being redeveloped, we're losing out. How is that area going to be serviced in the winter? The police officers don't want to protect that area. They don't want to go into that area. So you, yeah, Greg mentioned, you'd be tying our hands. You'd be tying everybody's hands to make a quick decision for something that doesn't necessarily have a plan. It doesn't have a clear action plan. The only thing that's clear is that the city's losing out and the taxpayers are losing out on public utility. Um, and I'm sorry that you guys are in the middle of a political mess, but it's to me it's a little ridiculous uh, that you have to be making this decision. And um, I think a decision of no or no decision at all is the right decision um, because the council, um, whether or not they make the right decision, um, I hope they do, can handle this. Uh, and a landmark designation um, it really doesn't, it's not in the best interest of the city because then we don't have all the options available to us to make the right decision. So um, I would say do what you've done for the last umpteen years and don't act on this because you haven't. So thank you um, and I appreciate you uh, voting this down. Thank you. Yes. Dorian Bradford, 804 Berry Street. I'm a new resident here in uh, Wisconsin. 
Um, I have been involved in historic preservation, both in Williamsburg and um, worked with uh, the Daughters of the Revolution on some of the projects in Alexandria, Virginia. So I am in favor, in a way, of historic preservation. However, I agree with the comments that have been brought forward tonight and that I think Stoughton's beautiful. It's why I moved here. It is a lovely historic town, and I hope I'm here for the rest of my days. But that building, I really don't see anything. I read the histories. I'm surprised that Mr. Wallen said that they couldn't find a date because I do believe there was a date given in the history that you people presented. Mm -hmm. So I would be curious to know how that, <laughs> how that worked. I'm sure he tried very hard to find it from what I've heard. Um, one of the things that concerns me is the last two years in the governor's budget, he's taken away historical credits. Now, last year, through the work of the Realtors Association, they pushed with a couple other groups to get those credits reinstated. But this is a governor who is continually going to not present that in his budget. So I think there is a real concern when you don't have a plan, you don't have a developer, we have two other buildings that have already, under my understanding, are under historic landmark that haven't been developed or nothing's been done with, that here we go forward with a third one that's going to first stop the project that's in place from the RDA, which is a lovely project. I went to all the meetings, the charrettes and whatnot. It looks like it'd be really great for Stoughton. But beyond that, we, we want to get, don't want to get stuck with a building that nobody is going to take on. And I think at this time, the Landmark Commission, whether it's with this building or with the other buildings or any other buildings that might be coming down the road, really have to think seriously in fiscal terms if there aren't going to be tax credits out there. Because most developers who come in, especially on big projects, maybe not on a home or a small shop or something, but on big projects, they're just not going to move forward on them without those tax credits. So I hope that you take that into consideration when you make your decisions, because there's no other private funding or anything out there right now that you've raised that would supplement that. So I hope you vote no and move this forward. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to make a comment? OK, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. It could be landmarked if they tear down a portion of the building. You can landmark what's left. That, the, the partial teardown does not affect landmarking. It affects tax credits only. Is that correct? Well, it would affect the National Register. But nothing else. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so we'll continue with our deliberation on this subject. Um, I'd also like to remind you all that the author of the nomination, Gail Klein, is here if you have any questions. Um, I also would like to just say to Gail that we appreciate her work and did a great job on this nomination. I think Gail left. She just walked out, I think. Did she just leave? Oh, never mind. Gail left. <laughs> <laughs> She still did a great job on the nomination, and I appreciate all her hard work, and, it's, and it really sets the stage for us to evaluate this building against our ordinance. Um, you know, as a, as a reminder, we are required to evaluate this building based on the criteria in our ordinance. Um, I know you guys have a copy of that information, so I won't go over it again. Um, uh, but I also would just like to mention that there seems to be quite a bit of misinformation out there in the public about, about this building, about the project, about how preservation works. Um, you know, people rightly 
rightly so, have safety concerns about this building. Um, they're concerned about the condition. They're concerned about there not being a, a use or a plan for it right now. Uh, but these are all exactly the reasons why you pursue a, a developer to redevelop the site. That's, those are the problems that a redevelopment solves. That's why you hire a developer, because they can help a community develop that plan for a building. Um, uh, there was, seems to be a lot of concern, uh, and rightly so, about taxpayer money to rehab the building. Um, you know, the city is not a developer, so the idea is to find a developer to rehab this building. The city would not be rehabbing this building. They don't have the money and they're not a developer. That's not their role. So ultimately the goal is to find a developer who can help with this entire redevelopment site. Um, We've gotten a lot of comments about people asking to the city to clear the lot for redevelopment, that they don't want taxpayer money spent and they want the lot cleared for redevelopment, but they don't seem to understand that that costs money to clear the lot for redevelopment. So it's a little contradictory um, to say don't spend any money and then also say spend over a million dollars to clear the lot. So um, there, are, there. This is a very complex issue. There's a lot going on here. Um, I have no doubt that um, we'll continue to be talking about this this subject. But I, I'd like to hear um, from everyone else what they think about the the merits of the nomination. Uh, one thing also I'd like to help clear up, uh, there seems to be some confusion about landmark status versus being on the National Register. Those are two separate things. Landmarking is a local designation. The uh, National Register allows access to tax credits for developers to rehab buildings and other things. It helps protect historic assets. So it's two separate things, and what we are talking about now are, is a local landmark uh, designation. So a portion or a partial teardown of the building can be done, and the building could still be landmarked locally. If now that the city owns this building, if there is a partial teardown of what the city owns, future development is not going to gain access to tax credits, whatever they may be. They are going to be shut down. Now, uh, somebody brought up the, uh, the constant peril that the tax credits are in. Uh, it, we acknowledge that, or I acknowledge that. Um, it's, it's very difficult politically to remove those tax credits, even though the governor wants to keep it out of his budget because there's been so much in terms of positive development, including buildings like this in Manitowoc and other locations at the Miro plant, where there was an old dilapidated building that is a shining example of excellent historic preservation, restoration, and adaptive reuse at about a 40% tax credit clip, 20% from the federal government, 20% from the state government. Historically, or previous to the 20% state credit, there was a 5% tax credit. So um, Mr. Willeen's comment about an 18% tax credit, I, I believe that was Mr. Willeen, Willeen that yes. said that? Yes, okay. It's a different time, and the, the tax credits have moved up and down, and, but that's where they stand right now, is the federal government offers 20% for qualified projects where the developer follows all the rules that need to be followed, and the state offers 20% for those same projects. A lot of times, the people that do the redevelopment can't afford, don't have enough taxes to offset or to take a full advantage of those credits. So those credits are sometimes sold or syndicated um, at uh, 80, 90 cents on the dollar. So there's value there, even if you don't, if you can't take care of the tax or can't use the tax credits. 
there is value in doing a, a tax credit project. So I just wanted to clarify those sorts of issues that first and foremost, we're talking about landmarking versus national register. Yes. Can he ask a question? That's I, I I'm sure I'm sorry I don't I don't know the rules. <laughs> yeah. Sure. To the chair. Yeah. To the okay. chair. Yeah. All right. The chair says sure. But if you could just clarify that this project does not need local landmarking in order to get those credits. Oh, that's absolutely that, true. That could be put into the development agreement. So um, the landmark has no significance on getting those credits. So if, I just want to tell the whole is, story. That is sure. Sure. So, I'm, yeah. That's absolutely true. That that the tax credits that are absolutely necessary for the adapt. Is, can I keep going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tax credits that are absolutely necessary for an adaptive reuse project to have any chance of having any kind of success. That's the federal national register of historic places process. It's not the local landmark process. Once it's once it's landmark locally, it's a completely different game. Right. So. You, Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> Is there any effort underway to get that building registered on the or listed on the National Register of His Historic Places? Because if it, that doesn't happen, the, the tax credit point is moot. That is correct. To my understanding, yes. there is nothing in the works. That's that's correct. If the building isn't listed in the National Register, then they can't use the tax credits. Um, the building was evaluated by the State Historic Preservation Office for eligibility for the National Register. Um, and that evaluation came back that the property is potentially eligible under Criterion C in the area of architecture, if you want the technical terminology. Uh, eligible under Criterion C in the area of architecture as a locally significant example of late 19th century industrial loft construction and the best example of this type of construction in Stoughton. So it's, it was evaluated as potentially eligible, but um, there has been no action taken to actually complete a National Register nomination for the property. So that option is available. It's out there. Uh, typically, that would be undertaken by the developer. Um, uh, they need to have, um, you know, some sort of assurance that that is possible, and then the developer moves forward uh, by um, uh, filling out the, the various, going through the various stages uh, incrementally to get through the process, uh, spending more money, spending more of their own money every time uh, as as they go. Um, but uh, it's typically the developer that picks up that tab. So, um, yes, Good. please, go ahead. Well, I'm feeling a, a, a little bit torn about this whole thing because um, on the one hand, this is what we do as a Landmarks Commission. We are duty bound to try and preserve historic uh, property um, that's why we're appointed to this commission um, and until I read this nomination um, I mean I sort of knew that this was uh, connected with T.G. Mant one of the most famous people in our community and um, if you read about the, the history there and find out about all that uh, when it was built and the part he played in it and how then it was transferred to the Moline Plow Company and so it's sort of like what remains of Stoughton's wagon building history is right there that's the best example we have of it and so on the one hand I'm looking at it and I'm saying yeah why wouldn't we and that's why it's given as significant you know, that's what's attributed for its significance, maybe even more so than the architectural significance is the historic significance in the, in the city. And on the other hand, 
we're not members of the city council. We don't evaluate all the financial, which most everybody here is, is talking about. We're keyed in on, you know, whether or not it's historically or architecturally significant, and that's what we're supposed to be looking at. But at the same time, I'm a realist, and I'm hearing all these comments from the community, and I, I mean, I don't want to form walls between people. I don't want to, um, and as one of the gentlemen here said, well, it's been that way. It's stood without being landmarked for 20 some years or more and everything, and we haven't, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't even be doing this except for a couple council members came to our commission and asked that this be done. So we said, sure, we can do that. And that's why it's in motion. It wasn't a political thing. No. We didn't see that it was going to be torn down, and so we needed to just quickly make it a local landmark. That's, that's what precipitated it. And so now we have the nomination, and we're looking at it, and it's quite interesting. And it is a part of our history. So uh, right now, I, I, as I say, I'm just torn about what to do because I'm sympathetic to what most everybody is saying about it, and yet, you know, I'm appointed, as are other people here, to help preserve our history. That's what we're duty bound to do. We're not looking at all kinds of other criteria. So, but, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, starting with uh, Jerry Kittleson, uh, and echoed by a number of other people, um, I heard. Uh, the words, uh, you know, tying the city's hands. Um, it is true, and Peggy, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but if this building does have landmark status, the city is obligated uh, to use its resources to the best of its ability to preserve it, stabilize it, whatever. That getting it a demolition permit, if the city owns the building, and it is a landmark, is uh, either impossible or very nearly po impossible. Is that correct? Well, they would, we would follow the process in our ordinance, which is um, where there's a, a period where we work with the city to find an alternate solution to demolition. Okay. And after, after, so, that, after that point, um, you know, if there's no solution after that period of time has passed, then um, ultimately the decision is sent to city council where they vote whether to allow the demolition permit to proceed. Okay, so, so uh, um, sending this forward uh, as uh, uh, for landmark status to the city council for its uh, consideration and, and if it is approved, it is the city is obligated to try for 10 months. That's what the ordinance says. And the city doesn't have any special, any special um, obligations beyond those 10 months. Right. At that point, if the city decides to tear it down and there has been, an, I would assume, uh, something that could be considered to be an honest effort to find a developer <coughs> that will develop the project as, as we have considered it, uh, we, as we would expect, or as the city of Stoughton should expect uh, then it could be demolished if need be. So, in essence, uh, moving this forward to the City Council for its consideration, which we're not landmarking it, we're just moving it forward to the Commission if that happens, and the Commission accepts it. Basically, what we've done is we've given the building a 10-month stay of execution, at least. And hopefully, somebody, whether it's the one developer who was willing to come in, and I, I'm aware of others, at least one other, that may very well be interested. Um, the um, okay, so it it would essentially be a stay of execution. Which, hang on, um, you sir, I'm sorry, I, for, I forgot your name. Where you mentioned that this, that part of the city um, is without its street and without services and without police protection in the building. That's a that's a huge deal. I mean, I I wrote I wrote the report. Um, and in there, uh, public safety is a, is, a, is, a, is a very huge thing. I get it. But in the meantime, 
if we're if we move it forward, the city council is the the organization that makes the decision. Yes. And they are elected officials. Yes. It's that's really for the city council to consider. We talked about this is this is a body that discusses the merits of a of a building as a potential landmark and it moves forward. But I would recommend to everybody here, and I, I have everybody's names, and I wrote notes what everybody said because, uh, well, I, can I can I disclose? <laughs> I'm not I'm not a citizen of, of Stoughton. Uh, I am I, I live in Cambridge. Uh, but I've been asked to join this commission and I was appointed uh, because of my expertise in these matters. So uh, I'm volunteering my time as a non-taxpayer. Um, uh, in the end, this, this decision to do whatever will happen and it will go to the city council, the elected officials. So one thing for us to consider is <clears throat> You know, there's a bigger picture here. When we first looked at this project, the environment was a lot different. A lot of things have changed since we first looked at this uh, building for eligibility. Um, and I think that we've gone over this a number of times where we believe that the building meets the criteria in the ordinance, which is what we are obligated to follow. But you can't deny that there are issues with the developer since we looked at it first. There are, there's a better understanding of the significant safety issues with the building since we looked at it. And now the street's been closed. These are really, really uh, important changes to the, to the larger environment that weren't there when we first looked at the building. Um, it seems to me that while I think the building is eligible for, the, for local landmark status, and I think the building, I'd love for the building to be preserved and rehabbed and adapted to an awesome new use and contribute to this community once again, the reality is, in my opinion, the most important thing is to get the redevelopment back on track. And this is distracting everyone. Everyone's focused on the wrong thing now. Instead of focusing on this really awesome redevelopment on the river, which I think universally this community is standing behind, people are now spending their time fighting about this building. And it's sort of, you know, sucking all the energy out of what we really should be doing, and that's finding a great developer and creating a great project down there on that whole project site. I think that given how much has changed since we first looked at this property, you know, the developer issues and the safety issues, um, the concerns that people have brought to us, I really appreciate that you have come here to talk to us because quite frankly, I've come to talk at meetings and have been ignored. And so I appreciate that you've come here and I've really tried to listen to what you have to say. Uh, I think it's important that this should be a community project. So I'm, not, I'm trying not to ramble, but what I think that the city needs a chance to take a step back, take a breath, have the RDA do their job, find a developer. We know there's you know, support and interest in retaining this building. And so if a developer is identified that's willing to take that on, great. Um, but I 
think our next step is to partner with the RDA and find the best redevelopment for that site that we can, hopefully using this building. But uh, the priority should turn back to working together as a community to get this development going. Um, and I would suggest that there's no rush for us to landmark this building or recommend landmarking this building to council right away. The building's not going anywhere for now. <laughs> um, and I really think that the city needs some time to regroup. And like I said, the RDA needs some time to be able to do their job. Um, we can always, uh, well, I would like for us to participate and partner in that process. I think that we have a lot to offer. Um, and I think that it's a waste of everyone's time and energy to be fighting over a building and lose sight of a really amazing opportunity to redevelop that part of our city. Well, there's been some great preparation. We have the tools available now. We have the nomination. We have the study that was done that as soon as someone comes in and says, our tax credit's available, we already have the answer. Um, we're, we're finished with that part of it. Eligibility in the various components is all right there. Yes. So now we just have to find those folks. And then we can come back to status um, and help them out. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. So we'll help out whoever steps forward. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I am in this industry and I will actively seek the involvement of people that I know that would that would be interested that I don't know they knew this opportunity existed frankly mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I don't know anything about really about the RDA process but um, I know that there's an awful lot going on in the markets around Stoughton I don't know that that the bell was rung loudly enough uh, to get the attention of some of the developers that would get into this so uh, Peggy um, if I'm if, if I'm I'm in agreement with you, I, I have a lot of heartburn um, recommending uh, moving this forward to the council um, uh, because I think that you are right that there is no real hurry in landmarking this now. I also think that landmarking it would definitely. Uh, alter some people's impressions as to uh, what th maybe even their vision as to what they can accomplish in a redevelopment and I don't think that it would you know <laughs> I, we have we have the letter of our of what it is we're supposed to be doing but then there's also the spirit of what we're supposed to be doing and I think that if we follow our spirit follow our hearts on this I'd say that uh, we should table it and uh, I, I, I so I move that we table this nomination and revisit it on a periodic basis. And I'm all ears as far as what we think we should revisit it. Is it monthly? I know we'll talk about it, but will we formally review it? Uh, I'm wondering if I could add something. You're more than welcome to. Um, that I think that our part of our next steps is to work with the RDA and um, City Council and the Plan Commission and the citizens of this community and do whatever we can to participate in um, finding a great solution. And so I'd like us to proactively um, partner with the RDA and that way we can I know this isn't something you can put in a motion. Sorry, Michael. Um, <laughs> but yes, when, when we reach a point where the city feels they're in a place where they're comfortable, they've got a developer, there's a plan, there's, it's, there's enthusiasm, um, that's the time that we can take another look and um, and revisit okay. landmarking this building. 
there are there are aspects to this issue though that that really do need a timer i think i th really think that we should we should limit our efforts in terms of time because you know this building yes this building was abandoned and neglected <laughs> and then purchased and then uh, and and basically ignored um uh, you know I, I think we should give it some time uh, but in the meantime, there are there are people that uh, you know there's there's risk, and then there's also you know people that are not getting the services that they're they're paying for with their taxes. And so uh, I think we need to I think if if as as we craft this motion, I really think that there should be some sort of a timer on it. Um, uh, and um, and I agree the RDA. And the RDA, as far as I understand, is is um, looking at this again, um, well, in part because the developer that wanted the building gone is now a, backed away from the table to see where things go. So that developer, I think, has done the city a favor and, and has kind of encouraged the city to figure itself out mm -hmm. before it, it gets in again. Um, I think we should take the best advantage of the time that we have and move forward and try to find something that works. So I'd like to see a timer on it well, as well. So if, if we craft the motion and say to table it, I would suggest that we give ourselves four or six or ten months uh, at a maximum before we revisit it again. Okay. And I, I don't know, I mean, I can be talked off that. Yeah. <laughs> um. It is. Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, then let's, let's get back to having a motion so that um, uh, move to table any recommendation to City Council yes regarding the landmark landmarking locally landmarking this building yes um, until such time that the city Is has a redevelopment plan that's not a that's not a that's not a definite that's time not a, no it's not a well but we can, we can okay all right so, so I'll, I'll relent on the timer time. thing. So, Michael, did you get which, what was just written? And could you possibly read that or said? a motion by Marpole to table until such time as the city has a redevelopment plan? For the... Anymore? For the... the building or the site? For the... For the, for the site. site. Okay. Because yeah. okay. the building is included in the site. Yeah. Second? Second. Second? Alan? Yeah, motion by Marpole to table until such time as the city has a redevelopment plan for the site. Second by Hedstrom. Any other discussion? Do we ready for a vote? Yes. All in favor, aye. Motion to go. No, roll. it's been requested that we vote by roll. Roll call, roll call vote, but that's your call. Yep. I just wanted, we just, just in case you forgot. Uh, yeah, okay. I know. I'm sorry. So, Berrigan? Aye. Hedstrom? Aye. Cook? Aye. Marple? Aye. 4 0. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Our next agenda item. Kim, do you still have time or are you? I, you gotta go. Are you done? I, I gotta go. My 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 kid's been a trooper. Okay. Um, mini grant program. <laughs> no COAs. Yeah, mini grant mini grant program. All the letters went out to the res grant recipients. We're just waiting for COAs to come in, and then we can schedule that on-site visit, and you know get those projects started. I think Do we need to recontact the people. Yeah. Has I, I anyone think acknowledged receiving their yes. award letter? Yes. Okay. Um, but I okay. think that um, Thank you, sweet probably before the next meeting, I'd like to follow up with all those people and just say, hey, mm -hmm. still going to have a project? Yes. Um, yes. Because if they're this not, year. we need to know. <laughs> yeah. So that's where we are with the, with the mini grants. Okay. Um, I've also talked to Michael Engelberger about his grant and working out those local landmark issues. Okay. Getting that straightened out. Okay. So we've... I was out of town, then he was out of town, so we're going to meet soon to talk about that. Okay. 
Um, the only other item I'd quickly like to talk about is our next meeting. Hmm. Oh, if right. we want to resolve that through email, that's fine. Oh, hey, we uh, can do it right now. Yeah. I was trying like to get to the first two dates are out. Yeah. So the 19th or 20th? One's a Tuesday, one's a Wednesday. September 19th or 20th. 20th is open for me. 19th is also uh, open in the evening. So open, open. 19th or 20th. I prefer a Tuesday, but it doesn't really. Is that the 19th? The 19th. I can't do the 19th. Okay. Well, I guess. Are you available on the 20th? Children use dad. Are you available on the 20th? It's, it's, a, it's the daycare board, which we're not oh. there anymore, so I could not go, I guess. Well, are you available on the 20th? 20th is good. Okay, so the 20th one. is open for everyone so far. Yes, I um, have absolutely nothing. Okay, so maybe the 19th could be second choice. Okay, okay. I'll email those of us who are not here this evening okay. um, to confirm Almost that date. And then at that time, we're going to be talking about the ordinance um, revisions. Oh, yeah. And so we have some homework to do. I will, I'll email you guys. Um, I don't have information to. You're not meeting with uh, Attorney Dragney. This is just the, the, this group talking about no. the, the ordinance? September, or in September, he was planning to join us. September, yeah. yeah. OK. September yeah, so that's, that's the next, okay. that is this, the next meeting. Oh, OK. We this can't. is for September. Oh, yes. yes. Gotcha. Well, if we're going to do, are we, are we still, Kim, are we still doing uh, uh, a grant? And don't we need to have by September 11th? Oh, a CLG grant? Oh, goodness. I, I don't know. Weren't you going? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what the question was. I was asking <laughs> Joe whether CLG money could be used for what was the. Yeah. What was it now? <laughs> was it updating landmark nominations? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. And I'd have to check my notes. I know. Yeah, that's okay. I'll have to go back to. Uh, yeah. To the minutes. So you don't know. I should have that. Yeah. But anyway, I need. Our next I need a. I need an email. The the <laughs> need an assistant. Lily. <laughs> I do. You have to have a letter of an You got. You got to help me. Or you got to remind me. Early September. Or yeah. Usually it's like by the end of so the summer. The I know, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You've been amazing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so in, what's yeah. Your name? so we'll have to maybe. I'll ask Joe when that. I'll ask Joe when that deadline is. This is Steve. Um, Other than that, is there anything else? Oh, there's no. the uh, conference coming up in October. The we can talk about that next. Yep. Yeah. Right. I'm going really to break quorum. Okay. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Okay. My Thank you. Hey, Hi, really. Thanks, Was there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Was, yep. There was a motion to adjourn. Did I miss it? Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. I, I, I so move. Okay. okay. I'll yeah. second that. <laughs> All in favor? Put my kid to bed. Right. Details. Right. Thank you guys for being patient. Did we want to do that on roll? Oh. Did we do that on roll call, please? Could, could we have that on roll call, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys. Bye, Kim. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 8.50. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>